Okay, everybody, time for the fourth and final game. Let's battle one last time. On the draw against Loki Trickster. One of Flash's lamest enemies. That's decent. Sky King is always awkward. Sword in the opening is always awkward, but tree power removal plus Vara with the colors already is quite good. That was a very good top deck against turn one uh, Oni. So being able to go annihilate into setback is gonna help us catch up and set back yet another Skycrack opponent. Um, might actually go pressed into setback here to make sure we can Vara the turn after on curve and hold back the Annihilate for like a Brigand or something later. Oh. Not sure. Because he might play a Vadius next turn anyway and then annihilating a setback target doesn't make a whole lot of sense. So yeah, I think I'll just... To this bottom poster, it's too slow, clunky. Let's just hope he plays like a Badius or something that dies to set back. Vader, that's kind of perfect. Ooh, that's insane. Setback value galore. And then we have the Annihilate for um, the big Warcry thing that he got from like the double Warcry. There's like a plus two plus two thing looming that we might want to be able to annihilate and depending on whether or not there's pressure we can play Vara problem is you might have an answer to Vara which sucks a bit okay I think I'm fine with setting up Vara first let's do call first setback seems fine here so we do this no permafrost that's quite good news for our Vara We place another unit, we set back, if not we probably bar. Okay, that's a bit rough. And means we... I think we'll have to go to this, play power. Maybe, I should... Maybe it was a bit too risky not to just jam Vara and set her up, but we'll see. It's always a tightrope walk between making sure your stabilizer sticks and actually you know just that i think tabrot is the safer thing here because he might draw into like a permafrost and then playing vara and getting permafrosted might just mean we die to a torch or a nightfall he seems to have a torch that's very important to know i think there was a stop Okay, so I think we can attack here. Hammer, but good. I think I'll equip the hammer and then I'll just do this. Take the torch when it doesn't do anything anymore. Hot plate. Yes! Nice! Oh, sweet. Top 5. Awesome. Amazing! That was a sweet line. Playing the rune hammer and then taking the torch. Yeah, it definitely mattered here because going to 3 means we die to another torch. There's just more stuff that you can like draw to get lucky. And yeah, sometimes Tavro just a safer stabilizer than Vara. But yeah, this was a real Skycrack draw and we were on the draw and we still won. But to be fair, last time I played the deck I only had like two setback and then Skycrack is a lot rougher. Setback is amazing against Skycrack, especially when the opponent has a draw like this where they just kind of like have to flood and hope they can get enough damage in before Hushul because playing around setback and then 
playing around Harshul and just is too much. I think if your opponent has that back and Harshul and you don't have a hand that can play around it well with Aegis or bigger health units, you might have to just hope they don't have it. So it might have been very well correct what uh, Loki Trickster did there, but it's debatable. Would need to see his entire hand to make up my mind. If he already had the Scepter, for example, he definitely has to play Scepter there and not go like double unit. That's very risky. Maybe he just didn't expect setback or something, which is weird though, because it's kind of something... It's like not playing around Hailstorm in a primal control deck. Um, okay, that's it for game number four. We went undefeated, so that's pretty sweet. Or no. You saw how the deck plays out. The cheap discard can be quite important for exactly the things we saw. So, not 100% sure if there should only be two cheap discard spells, but... Um, yeah, the setbacks just do a whole lot. Maybe it's fine to go to three setback. Like, setback is still a bit situational, a bit clunky. So I could see going down to three maybe and adding like another shakedown instead. That's something that I kind of like in theory and might be nice. So yeah, that's something to keep in mind and consider because having this cheap one cost discard spell to check if there is an answer for Vara and then drop a Vara on turn four to lock up the board can be very powerful too in a lot of situations and the shakedown also does good stuff uh, all around gives you information uh, the nightfall can help you hit your power early on sometimes although obviously the nightfall is something that usually benefits the opponent more but it can be better to have both players draw a card if you really need to hit your power than uh, both players not drawing a card as we saw in that one game. So yeah, uh, deck is still quite nice. Don't think it's a top deck, it's like another tier one deck, uh, tier two deck, because it has its weaknesses and uh, not the same power level as some other decks, but it is very consistent and quite powerful for how consistent it is, because there's always like the balance between like two factions and higher consistency and smoother power development and those three faction decks that have these clunky inconsistent power bases but a lot more options and powerful cards and with channel gone this seems like the more likely control direction to take okay <clears throat> once again if uh, you haven't subscribed yet please hit the subscribe button down here on the skull Turn on notification icon to not miss out on future content. Also follow me on Twitter and Facebook. And on Twitch if you want to catch me live streaming. Uh, Eternal and other things. And yeah. If you want to support EternalTitans.com. Or my YouTube channel. Consider whitelisting us. That really helps too. And yeah. That's it again for today. This was Eternal Contenders with Arjun Port Control. I am Manu S, and I thank you for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye.